welcome back to my next playthrough series. Yes, once again, we're back with Baldrick's Bumbling Band and it's Zombicide Black Plague. This time we're on to quest number four called Famine. And uh, I'll just read here what it says. It says, a few days have passed. These zombies are for the most part stupid as hell, but they never tire or need food or even sleep. Alas, we're still to human. We need food and a secure shelter. There are many vaults beneath the town. Clever survivors could hole up and rest for a while, but we still need to gather supplies to last a couple of days while we plan our next move. This war may last far longer than anyone, even the necromancers, expected. All right, our objectives. We have to reach the objectives in order to win the game. And there are five of them on the board. There's one here, one that you can't quite see through the door up north, three over in this side of the board. We'll, we'll get to those as we need to while we're playing. Uh, so objective one is we have to find enough food. We have to gather the following six food cards in your team's inventory. We need two apples, two salted meat, and two water. And we have to lock ourselves in the vault. You win the game when all survivors are in the yellow vault during the end phase without any zombies with them. The quest is played with six survivors, but of course I'm doing it with five. Uh, considering the objectives, the duration of the game can vary in time, so we'll see how long it takes because I do a complete playthrough. Special rules. We're going to put the blue objective randomly among the red objectives face down. Did that? Don't know where it is. Put a random vault artifact in the vault. I've also done that. Candles, clothes, and iron tools. Each objective gives five experience points to the survivor who takes it as per normal. And keys. Both yellow vault doors cannot be opened until the blue objective has been taken. So we have to find the vault keys under one of these objective tokens is a blue marker. Uh, and then we will be able to get into the vault. Uh, all right. And so we have our five uh, survivors. Of course, we have Bumbling Baldrick this time. We've got Nellie, Ann, and Clovis as per usual. But we also have one guest showing up in our group for this playthrough, and that's Azure. And Azure, we're going to take a look at his card here in a minute, is a dual-wielding, kind of looks like a drow elf sort of dude. He's going to help us find supplies and get down in that vault to survive into the next quest. Now, this is going to be a brutal one because we have four spawn points on the board. Wow. Yeah, count them. Four. There's two on this side of the board, two on that side of the board. That's a lot of zombies spawning every single turn. So, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to win this one. This, uh, with the, an extra spawn point, going to be extra difficult. So, once again, we're going to take a quick look at our survivors. And then we'll probably have the first uh, round, our first turn of the game. And that'll probably be the intro and episode one. All right, so let's take a look. Uh at our uh, survivors starting with Clovis he's up first I randomly selected who's going first uh, it'll be Clovis, Azure, Nelly, Ann and bringing up the rear Baldrick so let's take a look at their abilities and cards and uh, do a little quick recap on what's happening and once again long uh, long scan here so I don't know how this is focusing but we have here Clovis he's gonna be going first he's got a short sword uh, which rolls one die, hits it a four plus, doing one damage only. So he can't take down fatties, but he can bash down doors. Uh, he can put a shield up in his armor slot if he so desires. And his starting ability is he gets plus one die melee. So he's going to be rolling uh, one extra die doing a melee attack. All right, that's Clovis. We've seen him before. We're not going to dwell on him too much. Up next, Azure, our new guest player for this episode, or for this uh, playthrough. All right, Azure also starting with a short sword. He's got rolling one die, hitting four plus, doing one damage. He start His starting ability is Sword Master, which means any melee weapon uh, is considered dual wielding. And he can put a longbow in his armor slot, which is pretty cool. That's Azure. Again, he kind of looks like... Uh, uh, Drizzed from uh, the D&D series, but anyway, that's him. Up next, we'll take a quick look at uh, Nelly, Anne, and Bumbling Baldrick, and uh, yeah, then we're going to start our playthrough. Ooh, I've got a bad feeling about this one, but uh, we'll see how it goes. And here's Nelly. Oh, I should say, of course, Clovis is re in red, Azure is in green, and Nelly 
the blue. I have to remember this so that I don't mix up the miniatures as I play, as I've done sometimes in the past. All right, Nelly. We know her from basically all the playthroughs I think I've done so far. She's going to be wielding the hammer this time. To start with, rolling one die, hitting on a 4+, plus, doing 2 damage a hit, uh, which can take down Fatty, so that's good. And she can put a dagger in her armor slot if she wants to. And her starting ability, as we know, is plus 1 free move action. All right, up next, take a look at Anne. And Anne, the superstar of the series, as always, the crazed nun. She's also starting off with a hammer this time, I've decided. We're rolling one die, hitting a four plus, doing two damage a hit. Again, taking down fatties if we need to. Uh, and she can put a dagger in her armor slot, the same as Nelly. And her starting ability, which I really like, is Bloodlust Melee. She can move up to two uh, spaces into a zone containing... Uh, zombies and do an attack which is pretty awesome so that's her starting ability we've seen her in action many times saving everyone's bacon as per usual up last uh, is uh, bumbling baldrick himself and bumbling baldrick and uh, yeah I use these little guy here just this keeps track for me as to who's taking their turn who's up next and so forth all right in purple uh, yes uh, and yellow baldrick purple mage uh, he can put a sword of any type into his armor slot uh, and his starting ability is spell caster so he can cast uh, a attack or in uh, forget the other type of spell he can basically cast one spell on his turn for free uh, and he's starting off with mana blast which is just a uh, and it, yes everyone starts with starting equipment nothing special we have to do searching in buildings to find the cool stuff uh, and it's a combat spell. It just rolls one die, hits a four plus, doing one damage. It has a bit of range though, so you can hit it in your own space or one space away. And here we have Bumbling Baldrick. All right. Uh, so without further ado, what else? There was one other thing I wanted to mention. Ah, yes. I'm once again using Dead Eye blockers because they are just so much fun uh, for me to curse at them when they come out in large numbers and cause us issues. All right. Uh, let's go back to the board then, and I think uh, we're just going to go right ahead. So we know what we need to do, uh, we know who our heroes are, and uh, so we need to uh, get moving. we got to get our supplies, we have to find the keys to get down to the yellow vault, lock ourselves in there, and uh, hole up for a few days to recover. Is it going to be easy to do? I don't think so, but let's get at it. And uh, we're going to go back to the main board and we're going to start having uh, our first turn for Quest for Famine. All right, so we're going to start off here with Clovis in the red. i got to remember to keep these miniatures um, with the correct hero or survivor. I sometimes mix them up, which I try not to do. But as I'm talking and moving and rolling dice and doing things, I sometimes get confused. Which, if you've watched my playthroughs, you probably already know that. All right, Clovis is up first. First thing we want to do, of course, while we're, everyone's in the blue, less threatening zone, we want to get as many doors open and spawn as many zombies in the buildings as possible. Uh, so that when we open up the doors later into buildings that have a whole bunch of spaces, we don't get uh, tons and tons of zombies and necromancers and everything else spawning. So what I want to do for Clovis, I want him to open up this two-door room here. There's an objective marker in here. Let's hope it's the blue one, which means we can go down into the... Uh, vault and hide out. All right, Clovis has three actions. His first action is to move right here. For his second action, he will be trying to slice open this door. Uh, and he has his short sword hitting on a, I believe it was a four plus. Uh, so I'm trying to get organized here. Uh, for, so for his second action, he's going to try and chop the door open. Yep, hitting on a four plus. And he rolls a two which doesn't do it so clovis a little out of practice i'm going to try that again for his final action come on clovis and he rolls a six which is quite sufficient to chop this door open all right boom the door is open which now means we're going to be spawning in these two zones so i'm going to zoom down here we're going to spawn zombies in both of those rooms mm. all right so clovis chops open the door we're going to spawn here first and then here we're in the blue zone. Let's take a look and see what horrific things appear. We get a double spawn. So this section here uh, is going to get 
two spawns. I really hate double spawns, but anyway, it is what it is. The first of the two, whoops, two double spawns as I throw cards around is a Necromancer. Oh, you forgot to be kidding me. All right, well, a Necromancer appears in this room. I guess he has a laboratory or something set up. And with the lovely Necromancer comes the Necromancer spawn point, which immediately spawns zombies. So this is the first of the double spawns. So, uh... It's a runner. Wow, that's uh, pretty nasty. So he's in here with a runner, but that was only <laughs> that was only the first of the double spawn. Now we have to spawn again. Wow, this is a uh, pretty. I was saying as we're in the blue, another. You got to be kidding me. Two runners show up in this first room with a necromancer. Wow, that's. Uh, that is not good. Okay. Wow. I'm not even sure what we're going to do now. Well, that was uh, Clovis. Up next is Azure. Uh, as you were, I guess I'll call him. And, oh man, that's already bad luck. So we get a Necromancer, two runners, and a Necromancer spawn point. Wow. All right. Going to do some thinking. We're going to come back. We're going to have Azure his turn. All right, well, that was pretty crappy luck, <laughs> so we're going to continue on. Azur also has a short sword. He can chop things open. I think he's going to head for this door with the objective in here. So his first action, he will move here. His second action, he will try chopping open that door. All right, so on a four plus, he'll chop the door open, and he gets a five, so no problem for Azur. He chops the door open. He still has one action remaining, though. Let's not forget. And we're going to spawn in the blue zone in this objective room. And we get, of course, a fatty, which he can't take down with his short sword. Uh, okay, well, there you have it. He has one action left. And I think, oh, man, I think, oh, where does he even want to go? I think he's going to move over here try to do try, maybe next turn to try to open up this huge room up here wow already i can see us getting into trouble somehow <laughs> right well that was azur taking his turn up next is nelly one of our two superstars nelly and Anne, of course the best ever Nelly, we have in the blue, and uh, she has a free move action. So she's going to move here for her first action. That's free. She has three actions remaining. She's not going to fool around. She's going to try to take this fatty out. She's going to take her first of three actions moving right in here with the fatty. And then she has two chances to try to kill the fatty with the hammer, hitting on a 4+, plus, doing two damage per hit. Come on, Nelly. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Was there ever any doubt? Nelly crushes the fatty into the room. No problem at all. That's going to give her an experience point, zero to one. And then she has another action remaining. She will take a look at this objective. Is it blue? Holy man. Okay, that is super, super lucky. And yes, I did randomize these, and I totally... Um, mixed them all up and didn't know where they were so Nelly is going to get five more experience points taking her to six which is one away from yellow danger zone that is super awesome so we can now open the crypt door uh wow that is super good so getting the necromancer and two runners was bad luck this was really really good luck holy jumping okay um yeah that's might make this play through a little bit easier but uh luck of the draw all right nelly of course nelly superstar doing her thing up next is Anne, and uh, Anne also has a hammer hmm i'm not quite sure what Anne's going to do but uh, let me think about it we'll come right back have Anne take her turn okay i think what we're going to do with Anne is we're going to have her she's got three she's going to go one two so two actions of course there's no diagonal movement in zombie side it's all orthogonal two movements and she will open this door try to open this door uh she hits with her hammer on a four plus so she can try and crack open that door and she rolls a four of course this is Anne we're talking about 
the door is handily smashed open with hammer wielding Anne. That was her third and final action, but we do now need to spawn zombies in that room in the blue. And we get, ah, th oh, wow, three dead eye walkers. That, oh, ho, ho, ho. that opens up a gargantuan can of worms. Holy man, because they will be able to shoot at Anne and kill her, possibly. Uh, wow. And she doesn't even have another action. Okay, oh my god, this is, this is really not, wow, this is interesting. <laughs> interesting and dangerous. All right, up next and up last, which I think is going to be last for this episode. Wow, we have Bumbling Baldrick. And, uh... He's got three actions and he has spell casting. Okay, Baldrick, it's up to you to try and protect Anne. If you don't, we're going to have to smack you one. All right, Bumbling Baldrick, one, two actions. His first two actions are just moving here. So he has an action and he has spell casting. So for his, basically what it means is he gets to use Mana Blast twice. Once for spell casting and once for his final action. He might be able to take down two of the Dead Eye Walkers, which will help a lot. Otherwise, they're going to be doing a world of pain. Uh, so I'm going to roll for the first Mana Blast, hitting on a 4+. plus. Come on, Baldrick. A 6! Wow! Baldrick. Way to go, Baldrick. This is good. Maybe he's learning. Maybe he's learning. Alright, so he's going to get one experience for that, 0 to 1. Now he has his spell casting ability. He gets to do it again. Come on, Baldrick. You can take out another one of these losers. You can do it. Another six. Wow. Baldrick is all of a sudden a star. Uh, at the opening episode here, he takes out another Deadeye Walker. That's pretty incredible, <laughs> I think. Oh, man. All right. I think now that was uh, all of our heroes going. Uh, and so when we come back, it's the zombie phase. And we're going to be starting with uh, attacks or movement. And then we do spawns. Ooh, nasty. All right, um, here we go. So I'm going to zoom out, and we're going to have the beginning of the zombie phase. Okay, and the only zombies on the board are the Necromancer and the two runners. Well, as you know, the Necromancer is going to try to make his escape to the nearest exit, which for him will be here. It'll be one, two, three, four, five, six away. Everything, every other spawn point is much farther away. So he's just going to take one movement point to here. Eh, the two runners now get two movements, and they're going to go one, two. So they're jumping right out here and with Clovis. Now, here is the real interesting part of our scenario. <laughs> if we pull runners activate twice uh, card, Clovis is going to take four damage. Clovis will be outright killed. Uh, <laughs> in this episode. Well, let's hope that is not going to happen. Well, that's basically all our zombie movement because that's all the zombies on the board at the moment. Now, of course, though, we have spawning time. And uh, I'm going to do... How I'm going to do the spawning is this is spawn point. We'll call it one, two, three is up here on the board. Four is down over here. Five will be the necromancer spot. So, if I just do a little bit of funky moving here like that, we can get at least spawn point one, spawn point two in. All right, let's get spawning. Everyone's still in the blue zone. What do we get? We get a fatty. Okay, well, one fatty we can handle, I think. So, he's coming out here. Second spawn point up there. We are going to get, what are we going to get in the blue? Nothing in sight. Whew, good. We can do with a lot of those. All right, I'm going to readjust the camera. And then we've got uh, two more spawn points on this side of the board. And then finally, we have the Necromancer spawn point. All right, so I kind of got the spawn point up here and a spawn point down there. So we'll do it from long distance. All right, continuing on. Spawn point number three is... Uh, <sighs> double spawn, which... I might as well move the camera down a little bit here. So we're going to have a double spawn here. Oh, joy. First of the double spawn is a couple of walkers. Well, we got some regulars here. A couple walkers show up. That's the first of the double spawn. And so the next spawn card for the double spawn is 
You got to be farkin' kidding me. Well, this is not too bad. It just means the necromancer activates. So for the second spawn, I gotta well, I gotta go over to that side of the board anyway to have the necromancer spawn point. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, have the necromancer take an action. All right, this is not all bad because the necromancer is gonna take an action, which means he's gonna try to get to this exit point. So he moves right out here into the flashing blade of uh, Clovis, possibly. So that's the necromancer's action. And for our final spawn, it's going to be at the necromancer spawn point. And an extra spawn is never good. We get one walker. Okay, that's not a big issue. One walker. All right, I'm gonna zoom out and we're gonna wrap up for our introductory, introductory and uh, episode one. Zombieside Black Plague. So let's take a look at the situation and uh, wrap up for today. Okay, so wrapping up things looking pretty good. Wow, we found the keys to the crypt already. That was super lucky. Uh, but of course, we're talking about Nelly, who is one of our superstars. Finding the keys, first objective token. Wow, way to go. But we do have Clovis, of course, in a bit of trouble. He's surrounded by uh, a necromancer and two runners, but... Uh, He's got a short sword, he gets one extra die on melee attacks, so uh, I don't think he's in too much trouble. Of course we have Anne here, can jump into the rescue if need be. She's always uh, into bloodlusty activities. Uh, yeah, and uh, did I forget to activate this guy? No, I didn't, because uh, I did forget to activate this guy, didn't I? He should have been... Ha, <laughs> jar! He should have been doing a damage. I probably left a note earlier in the video. Baldrick's going to take the... Actually, uh, who's going to take the damage? You know what? Anne's going to take the damage. She was the one that bashed open the door. She's going to go from three hit points down to two. Wow. I look, at least I caught it. At least I caught it. I was so happy that Baldrick took out two of the Deadeye Walkers. I forgot all about the third one in there. Who was sniping us from inside the room. Okay. Enough talking. This was episode one. Introduction. And, uh, yeah, so far, so good. We have Azure, guest star for this playthrough. Uh, the sword-wielding, uh, drow-ish looking character. All right, thanks so much, and we'll see you in the continuation of Zombieside Black Plague with Baldrick's Bumbling Man doing Quest for Famine.